All right. Intergalactic Council for Ethical Treatment of All Living Beings, or Ice Talk versus Humanity. Thank you, Bailey. You may be seated. All right, plaintiffs, we'll be making an opening statement this morning. See you whenever you're ready. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm here for the Intergalactic Council of Ethical Treatment of All Living Beings. And through the years of observation, we have witnessed humans desolate, destroy, deplete, and devastate the Earth and its resources. As we are all aware, the intergalactic law states that no life form shall alter the balance of, entire, of an entire planet's environmental system through the direct or indirect process in a way that favors the dominance that life form over life form dependent on the stability of the planet's environment. Due to an increase of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and methane, which are all man-made greenhouse gases, the Earth's temperature has <clears throat> elevated and will continue to elevate to a point it is beyond the environmental system's steady state of equilibrium. Humans believe that their planets believe that their actions do not have consequences. However, due to their selfish needs and overindulgences in harmful and polluting activities, their earth is suffering. If the humans do not do not take drastic repercussions, then the earth and all organisms that rely on it could be in terrible danger. Life on this planet will not be the same. Thank you all. Thank you, plaintiffs. Defense, do you have an opening statement this morning? Good morning, humans and aliens. I'm Rocky Fabian, Secretary General of the United Nations. As a representative of the entire human race, I am here today to explain our ideas and thoughts on this problem the aliens have proposed. The aliens have accused us of harming our beloved planet. They believe we are deficient and that global warming is a major issue. Significant changes have continually occurred through geologic time. Scientists have recorded for thousands of years how Earth's cooling and heating processes are constantly up and down. This is the reason the, our planet is what it is. Global warming is affecting our planet's climate, but not in the way the aliens look at it. It is a natural thing. Humans are not causing this, and it's all part of the Earth's natural nature. This is the beauty of the Earth. Things might seem to be bad, but look at the good side and the good outcomes. So this is a good thing, not a bad thing. We will do whatever it takes to keep our Earth's natural cycle at equilibrium. Any balance of methods are acceptable. We want to resolve the issue and come to a reasonable compromise. Our stability is important. We love Earth and we will do whatever it takes to hold on to it and protect it. We will discuss how we are trying to harness renewable resources to produce electricity to replace all non-renewable resources we are burning and putting into the air. We aren't here to make anything difficult. We aren't here to start war. We are here to do what's right. Thank y'all for listening. Thank you, defense. Plaintiffs, you may call your first witness this morning. I'd like to call witness Bailey. And what's her name? Um, Rosie Allman. Thank you. Bailey, can you swear this witness in? I move to admit Exhibit K. Ha, defense, have you seen Exhibit K? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections to being admitted into evidence? No objections. Hearing no objections, evidence K for the plaintiffs is admitted into evidence. You may proceed. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, what is your name in the room? I am Dr. Palomon, a cosmetologist working for the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Changing, specializing in the studies of polar ice caps. 
And what is your knowledge on this topic? Enhanced global warming has greatly affected the polarized caps. In what way? The enhanced global warming has caused dramatic glacier thinning. Um, I move to evidence G. Exhibit G? Defense, have you guys seen plaintiff's exhibit G? Yes, Your Honor. Any objections? No, no objections. All right. If plaintiff's exhibit G is admitted into evidence, you may proceed. Uh, Rosie, can you please explain this diagram? This diagram shows how since 1970 the glaciers have thinned several miles a year, amassing over the years that extreme ice loss. Um, can we move to admit uh, exhibit H? Defense VC plaintiff's exhibit H. Yes, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. Right. It's admitted. You may proceed. Um, um, can you please explain this time? This shows how the melting ice is causing the sea levels to rise. This could be a major problem for the coast areas and in in the very near future. No further questions. Thank you very much for your insight. Defense, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor. So you're saying your study was with the polar ice caps, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so with the polar ice caps melting, there you're aware no humans live around there, right? Yes. So how are the humans that uh, causes at least over here with the ice caps melting? Can you repeat your question? How are the humans the causes of the ice caps melting? Wouldn't it be more of a natural cause than a human cause? Not really. Can you explain that? We don't have the right accurate information for this right now. So, you can't really prove that the humans did it? Not right now. No further questions. Thank you, Council. Thank you, City Redirect for this witness. We'll let this decide. No, no redirect. No further questions? Yes. All right, got you done. Thank you. You may call your second witness. I would like to call witness number two, Mr. Jaquan Lee. Jaquan Lee, please come forward. Bailiff, please go ahead and swear him. Good morning, judge, jury, and audience. Good morning. Good morning. What is your name? My name is I saw this block group, but on Earth I'm known as Shaquan Lee. Uh, so you're an AE posing as a human, correct? Yes, that's correct. I have been taking on the form as a human in order to learn the way humans live. And what have you have learned? <clears throat> well, I've learned humans have died desolated the Earth. Okay, we offer Exhibit N into evidence. You move to admit? You move to admit. So it's an end to All right. <laughs> Have you seen plaintiff's exhibit in? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. All right, let's see what it is. Hearing no objections, plaintiff's exhibit in is admitted into evidence. Mr. Jaquan, you said the humans have dusted the earth, correct? Yes, ma'am. Can you explain this? Well, the evidence says it all. <clears throat> humans are pouring carbon dioxide into the atmosphere much faster than plants and oceans can absorb it. These gases persist in the atmosphere for years, meaning that even if such emissions were eliminated today, it would not stop immediately. As a result, sea levels could rise between 7 and 23 inches by the century's end. Rises of just 4 inches could flood many South Sea Island swamps in South Asia. Okay, no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Defense, any questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. So, you're, according to your evidence, you're saying that humans, we're polluting the entire air ourselves, right? No, sir. Okay, well, can you re explain the evidence toward me, please? I'm saying that um, humans have poured carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, but I'm not saying they have admitted it all by themselves. So it's not entirely human's fault? No objection, Your Honor. What's your objection? Please stand. 
It is a leading question, but it's okay, because this isn't his witness, so I'll allow some amount of leading questions with an adverse witness. Thank you. Okay, so, so you're saying that with us, we are a part of it, and it's some natural causes also. I'm saying y'all are a substantial part of it, and a major factor. Okay, and as an alien, you're coming in and taking a human form, right? Yes, sir. So in this technical way, you are somewhat part of the human causes. No, sir. I live a different life. I am a block blue. And the way we, <laughs> the way we live, do not require carbon dioxide to teleport and go places. But you said you're coming to Earth and taking the form as a human to learn the way we live. So you're coming into our lives and doing it the way we're doing. No, I'm coming to learn the way you live, but I still am able to transportate the way I want to live, and I use different sources as food. Well. Can you explain what sources you use? Objection, Your Honor. Irrelevant. Uh, I hear from the plaintiff a, a irrelevant objection. Can you explain why this line of questioning is relevant? Uh, if he explains the different kind of sources that he will be using, it will show whether or not it helps pollute the earth or not. It will, it's not all human causes. I think we've gone a little ways down this path. I'll allow a couple more questions, but then let's move it along. Wow. Right. So sort of sustained. Can you explain what sources you use? So block blue, flowers, <coughs> metal. We do not use, like, for example, cars to make CO2 go up in the atmosphere. We actually teleport because our way of thinking has allowed us to be able to do such things. No further questions. Do you guys have any redirect for your witness? No further questions, Your Honor. Okay, make sure you stand up whenever you talk to the judge. Oh, you guys, you're done. Thank you so much, witness. Uh, plaintiffs, you may call your next witness. We'd like to call witness three, Kiki Boy, to this one. Kiki Boy, please come on down and have the bailiff swear you in. Good morning. Good morning. Please say your name and occupation. We move to admit Exhibit D to evidence. Defense, have you seen that and any objections? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we have seen it and no objections. What was Exhibit D you said? Exhibit D is admitted. Thank you. Thank you. What have you discovered while at NASA, Ms. Boyd? We move to the Exhibit Q. Is that what it's? Defense, are you familiar with the N? Any objections? Uh, yes, Your Honor, and no objections. Exhibit Q is admitted into evidence. Thank you, Bailiff. We put that up on the over. Ms. Boyd, you mentioned that your department has done extensive research for a new planet. Could you explain why the, the need would be so? We have no further questions. Thank you, counsel. Defense, any questions for this witness? Yes, sir. You may proceed. Okay, so you just explained that with the Kepler that the humans do not have enough, that we're not building enough technology to get there, correct? Yes. Okay, so if we don't have enough technology to get there, how will Kepler even help any kind of humans? Well, we're trying to and is there any way that any kind of technology as of now that we have to do it? No, not yet. 
So, so as of right now, there's no possible way we make it over there to Kevin. Okay, no further questions. Thank you, Council. Plaintiff, any redirect for this witness? No further questions. Witness, thank you. You may step down. Plaintiffs may call your next witness. We'd like to call to the stand witness number four, John Rodell. Thank you, Bailiff. You may proceed. I move to admit Exhibit C into evidence. Yes, we have your honor and no objections. All right, hearing no objections, Exhibit C is admitted available. Put it up on our record. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Dr. Choko. Dr. Choko. Dr. Choko, where do you work and what do you do? I move to admit exhibit I into evidence, please. Defense, any objections? Uh, no objections. <laughs> All right, exhibit I is admitted. Can you explain to us what this evidence shows, Dr. Choco? This graph shows that since the Industrial Revolution in the mid 1850s, the concentrations of the greenhouse gases have increased exponentially. I move to admit exhibit J into evidence. Defense, any objections? No objections, Your Honor. All right, exhibit J is admitted. Could you please explain this evidence? This graph is based off the study conducted in 2001. It shows how B3 anthropogenic global warming, the average curve showing the world's average temperatures, has shifted to the right, making the world's average temperature a lot higher. And what would that mean for the Earth? That, ah, that's what we, the world could fall into other chaos. Uh, I'd like to move to admit evidence E into evidence, please. Exhibit, exhibit E. Defense, any objection to exhibit E? <coughs> no objections, Your Honor. All right, exhibit E is admitted into evidence. Uh, could you please explain this evidence? The jury will have it with them when they deliberate, so they'll be able to look at it again later. Thank you, Your Honor. Take your time. Can you explain to us what the evidence indicates, Mr. Choco? Well, at the top it shows the ocean rising temperatures, and at the bottom it shows the decreasing warming in the world. Thank you, Dr. Choco. You have no further questions, Your Honor? Thank you, Counsel. Defense, any questions for this witness? Hey, yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Uh, so, Dr. Choco, in this evidence here, it shows the rising temperatures in what? What was it? The sea levels. And does it have any proof that the humans caused these rising temperatures? No. So, basically, this evidence here is irrelevant towards you guys because it's more of a natural cause. Yes. But thank you. No further questions. Thank you, counsel. Plaintiffs, any redirect for this witness? No redirect, Your Honor. Thank you, you may step down. Plaintiffs, do you have any further witnesses to call? No, Your Honor. Did no, Your Honor. So, are you, does plaintiffs rest at this point? Yes, we rest our case. Thank you so much. Defense counsel, you, it's your case now. You may call your first witness. I would like to call Sally Wright to the witness stand.
Good morning, jury. Good morning, judge. Uh, can you state your full name? <coughs> My name is Sally Ryan. Uh, what do you do for a living? I work at the University of California in San Diego as a professor in physics. And uh, where did you attend college? Stanford University. Um, at this time, Your Honor, uh, I'll move to admit uh, Exhibit A. Plaintiffs, have you seen Exhibit A and any objections to it being admitted? Yes, Your Honor, we have no objections. Thank you. Hearing no objections, defense exhibit A is admitted into evidence. Can you explain to us how the greenhouse effect uh, effect works? The greenhouse effect is a process by which thermal radiation from a planetary surface is absorbed by <coughs> Um, are humans doing anything to fix this issue? We are trying to find other alternatives like wind turbines and hydroelectricity. Your Honor, I move to admit Exhibit B. Plaintiffs, any objection to Exhibit B being admitted into evidence? No objections, Your Defense Exhibit B is admitted. Can you tell us about your work on wind turbines? Wind turbines are devices that convert kinetic energy from wind to electrical power. A wind turbine used for charging batteries may be referred to as a wind charger. Your Honor, I move to admit Exhibit C. Plaintiffs, any objection to Exhibit C being admitted? No, Your Honor. Defense Exhibit C is admitted into evidence. Can you tell us more about your work on hydroelectricity? Hydroelectricity is generated by hydropower. The, the production of electrical, electrical power through the use of a gravitational force of falling or flowing water. It is the most widely used from, oh, it's the most widely used form of renewable energy. Okay, thank you. That is all your own. Thank you, counsel. Plaintiffs, any questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. <clears throat> We'd like to see Exhibit B, please. Witness, can you explain to us how these wind turbines work? wind energy could replace, say, fossil fuels? About 53%. No further questions. Thank you, counsel. Defense, any redirect for this witness? Uh, no, Your Honor. Thank you, witness. You may sit down. And defense, you may call your next witness. Uh, we'd like to call our second witness, Yashua Moore. state your name. And what is it you do for a living? Biologist. How long have you been a biologist? Some years. 
What's your main study of environmental biology? Can you apply your state of knowledge to the court? Regarding what? Uh, can you tell us what problems you have been surfacing over the polls? Um, yeah, we've experienced some um, traffic shifts of um, melting ice caps, and um, usually it's caused by the ozone, ozone deflecting, and uh, it's trapping you in UV radiation, and uh, it's basically causing Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Council. Plaintiffs, any questions for this witness? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. <clears throat> you said that the trapping of UV rays in the polar ice, ice caps is causing global warming. Yes, sir. That's correct. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Thank you, Council. Any redirect, or are you done with this one? No, you're done with Thank you. Thank you, witness. Vince, you may proceed with your next witness whenever you're ready. I would like to call Eric Barone to the witness stand. Mr. Barone, please come forward and have the bailiff swear you in. Please state your full name. Uh, my name is Eric Barone. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a professor at the University of Penn State and the head of the System Science Center. And uh, how long have you been a scientist? I have been a scientist for 27 years now. Have you gained any knowledge in global warming? Uh, yes, ma'am, I have. And can you apply or state your knowledge about our current climate changes due to global warming? To my understanding, there isn't just one cause to global warming. There are many causes to global warming, including natural causes that have been occurring for thousands of years. So what are you doing to help stop these issues before it's too late? Well, me and my partners have been working very hard to help find alternatives to use as fuel for our everyday lives. Your Honor, I move to admit Exhibit D and E. Plaintiffs, any objections to Exhibits D and E? <coughs> no objections, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Exhibits D and E are admitted into evidence. Uh, can you explain to me some of these alternatives? Uh, yes, ma'am. We have looked into using solar, hydro, and wind power as alternatives. And have these alternatives made a difference? They have. For example, the Three Gorge Dam in China is able to output 18.2 kilowatts of power and supply 3% of China's all energy needs. This is equivalent to 18 coal power plants. It's also equivalent to burning 11,000 oil barrels per hour. I see. That is all, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Counsel. Can I ask any questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Now, you said that in China, the hydroelectric dams provide 3% of the energy? Yes, sir, that is correct. Could you tell us where the other 97% comes from? Uh, Objection, Your Honor. It's a leading question. Uh, it is a leading question, but I'll allow it because this is an adverse witness. From fossil fuels and other alternatives used for. Uh, speaking of fossil fuels, could you tell us the adverse effects of fossil fuels? Uh, they emit CO2. And could you tell us what that CO2 does? <laughs> it causes global uh, warming. It causes global warming. Could you tell us why we need these other fuels, such as hydropower and wind power? We need these other fuels so we can stop using fossil fuels and emitting CO2. And, um, could you tell us how many years it would take for us to convert completely into these alternative fuels? I do not have that information. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Can you just any redirect for your witness? No, Your Honor. Thank you, witness. You may step down. Defense, do you have any more witnesses to call today? Well, we have no witnesses. We rest. Defense rests their case. Court will adjourn for five minutes. Listen to your bailiff. They'll give you instructions. All rise. Yeah, you, Chris.
Thank you, Mayla. You may be seated. <coughs> Plaintiffs, will you be offering a closing statement this morning? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed whenever you're ready. Thank you for listening to our proceeding, Sherry. We, the Inter Intergalactic Council on the Ethical Treatment of All Living Things, are here in the best interest of the planet Earth. These humans, though they are fairly a new species, are already having devastating effects on the Earth, its resources, and all other species on the planet. The humans focus on how they plan to make a difference and show no evidence on how they are currently making a difference. At this rate, there will be no planet for them in just a few years. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Defense, do you have a closing statement this morning? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Okay, so the Earth is, it has a lot of natural gases. A lot of things with this carbon dioxide has not been caused all by humans. They have things showing that the humans have caused everything but it's not true. He said we had no evidence and we had graphs which showed that over time we are making a difference. It's not going to happen. It's not a thing that will happen overnight. It's going to take a lot of time. And yes, as long as we're trying, there will be somewhat of a difference. We're trying as hard as we can. There was a lot of things that they showed that was honestly, it really helped us because they could not explain their evidence. And what we're doing is fighting with our wind turbines, our hydroelectricity, and everything, so we can have power electricity, power the electricity through the ways as as they're doing in China. Yes, it's not a big percentage now, but we're gonna have we're gonna need some time, and the time will help. If you give a, if you if they give us more time, we can prove the difference that we're making. Thank you. Thank you, Council. All right, well, that concludes our proceedings this morning. Uh, jury, I believe you've all already received your jury packet. Is that right, with the questions that you need to answer in front of you? Yes. Um, Bailiff, do we have the exhibits for the jury that they can consider during their deliberations? Um, so you'll look at the exhibits that the bailiff is going to give you. Um, you'll take them back with you to the jury room and deliberate. You have to answer the questions that are there in front of you and bring back a verdict. It needs to be not unanimous, but a majority vote of all of you. And, the and you all have to agree that that is your, your vote. Sound good? Yes. All right. Before I let the jury out, I wanted to thank the council this morning for your hard work. You guys did a phenomenal job. Regardless of what the jury decides, your, your clients should be very proud of you. You represented them well. One of you will win, one of you will lose. It doesn't mean you didn't do your job. You can't change the facts, and you represented your clients really well here this morning. Thank you, juror. You may adjourn to the jury room for your deliberations. All rise.
don't remember. Slay, if you were afraid to ask a question, you do. <laughs> No question. All right, I got I got some feedback. Y'all hear it? Y'all did such a good job. I was really, really, really impressed. Um, good, good opening statements. Both really strong. You framed your arguments really well. Um, everybody here out was really just great public speaking. Taking your time. Don't ever be afraid to take your time. We slow articulate. You guys did a really good job. Um, fantastic use of exhibits. You guys introduce a lot of exhibits, that's always what you want to do because that's what your jury gets to look at. They're going to have it in their hands and look at it because everything everybody says is a lot more fleeting. It goes out in one ear and out the other and sometimes they'll have a record back there with them to look at, but not always, but they always have those exhibits, so it's so good. Um, another thing you can do is use your exhibits as part of your argument. When you enter it, don't just say, I want to enter exhibit D, but I want to enter exhibit D. If I, if the judge, this is an environmental systems box trial that's going to show blah, 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 blah. It's a nice way to like slip in more argument without, without, just in a really easy way. Because you get to frame your exhibit in any way you want. So describing it as you're introducing it is always really helpful. Uh, good use of leading questions and good objections. Uh, you get to use leading questions when you're with an adverse witness, which means a witness who's in favor of the other side, who's not your witness. So you can use leading questions. If it goes too far, a good objection is argumentative. So leading questions are okay, but sometimes if somebody's leading your witness too much and sort of fighting with your witness, you can stand up and say, objection, argumentative. Like, well, let's not be mean to our witnesses. Um, and that's good. Uh, the irrelevant objection is always good, even though it almost never gets sustained because you get so much latitude with what you want to do and what you want to talk about. But what I did is usually what happens. The judge will say, all right, you know, that's a pretty good point, but we sort of want to give the attorneys the leeway to do whatever they want, ask their witnesses a bunch of stuff and try and get their point out in whatever way they want to. So they'll generally say, like, okay, I'll let you keep going a little bit, but let's wrap this up because it is pretty irrelevant. So a relevant objection, always, always useful, even though generally you won't really get it sustained. You'll get like a sort of sustained, let's move along quickly. Um, there's a really weird trial procedure rule where you're not supposed to thank the judge and it feels really awkward because you're in court and you're trying to be super polite and you want to be kind to everyone and respectful but the idea is the judge is here for you the judge is serving the community um, and the judge isn't doing you any favors this is the judge's job so you don't need to thank the judge thank your jury but don't thank your judge it's weird and everybody does it anyway and they're like thank you oh sorry <laughs> um, none of you guys chose to to redirect examine your witness, and that can be really helpful. So you do your direct examination, and you get your witness to say all sorts of awesome things, and then the other people get your witness to look bad, and then your ch you get the chance to come back in and redirect, and just essentially ask them questions again to help the jury remember, no, 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 the last thing I want you to hear out of this witness is what I want you to hear out of this witness, and they really are a strong witness, and here's why. So don't be afraid to do that, that's always really helpful. Um, yeah, and good closing statements also. Everything was just really strong. You guys did such a good job. I was really impressed. I hope you enjoyed it. it was, you guys did a really good job. And witnesses were good with your evidence. You guys really looked at the evidence and talked about it well and helped the jury understand what it showed, which is your job as a witness. So, awesome. Yeah, sure. You guys did an awesome job. Um, and there will always be one side that wins and one side that loses, but it doesn't mean you haven't done your job. When a client comes to you with a case, you don't get to make the facts. They come to you with the facts, and they might be great, and they might be awful. But your job is to represent your client and, and trust that the jury is going to provide the right outcome, and that may be the one you want or it may not, but it doesn't mean you haven't done a good job. All right, and I think let's um, thank Ms. Hawks appropriately for coming and doing such a great job. <laughs>